Hello everybody, this is a grumpy old guy gaming. Um, back with more card games here, and we're back with more Yu-Gi-Oh! because I really haven't sat down and thought about a platform to do any other card games with at the moment. There are a couple I would like to do, one not very surprising, maybe one or two would be rather surprising, and sometime here in the future I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, maybe after the holidays, grab a couple ring lights, grab a decent webcam, and uh, start doing some live action capture. But in the meantime, I uh, want to go ahead and get something out, A, to double the content of the card game section, and B, it's October and I want to do something Halloween-ish. Now, in my usual rambling fashion, and because card game videos can tend to be somewhat heat-seeking at times. I kind of want to make a disclaimer before getting into this deck. I took a long time off of Yu-Gi-Oh! and really only built casual in the first place. I played from 2002 to around 2006, 2007, but that was within a pretty small group of friends. The deck I had, and literally it was just one deck, uh, was competitive with those friends, and that was all I really ever cared about. Didn't get back into the game till about 2016. When I did, that deck, no longer competitive in the least. Brand new game. Everything had changed. So I looked for something that would be fun, that would fit my theme, my personal style, and could play against what my friends had had in the interim. And uh, Skull Servants popped up. Was sort of an interesting deck choice. I remembered Skull Servant from the very beginning in Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, more so from the PS1 game that we would play for goofs, because you could just sort of fuse monsters based on their types in that game, and having undead monsters really worked into a lot of nice mid-level power things. So Skull Servants were always kind of fun, and hey, it's a skeleton dude in a purple robe. To find out that they had created a deck type about it was pretty damn cool. This deck has not seen much in the way of a tweak, and it, it sorely needs it. It's back to the point where it's more of a novelty than anything competitive. Uh, that said, this is card for card what I have in the other room sitting there. And I'll occasionally play it on here against bots or in tag duels just for giggles. Every now and then an opponent bricks or isn't expecting it, and you sneak a win through, and that's kind of fun. So starting at the top, you've got the namesake of the deck, it's Skull Servant. There's nothing to it. It's a vanilla zombie, 300 attack, 200 defense. It's basically there because it's been there from the beginning, and it serves as a sort of flavor captain. Main event of the deck is the very next card. It's the King of the Skull Servants. Another one-star monster. Actually has no discernible defense, as most zombies don't. But it's got a question mark for the attack, and that's because the attack of this card is the combined number of the King of Skull Servants and Skull Servant in your graveyard times a thousand. That right there tells you what this deck means to do. It means to throw as many Skull Servants as it can into the yard and then make a super powerful king to swing over the top of things says when the card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can banish one other King of the Skull Servants or Skull Servant from your graveyard to special summon the card. So sort of a neat little flavor effect. It gets chucked onto the pile and it could rebuild itself out of scrap. This is where it gets really, really fun. Next card up is White Princess. Probably my favorite card in the deck. 3 star monster, 1600 attack. This card's name becomes Skull Servant while it's in the graveyard. Most of these cards' names are going to be treated as Skull Servant when it's in the graveyard. Simply defeat the king. 
You could send a white prince from your deck to the graveyard when the white princess is normal or special summoned. So that's already going to throw a white prince in the yard, which, spoiler, will be treated as a skull servant. During either player's turn, you can send the white princess from your hand or field to the graveyard, and all monsters on the field lose attack and defense equal to their own level or rank times 300 till the end of this turn. Doesn't affect Link Monsters at all, and this is a card that was far more useful before Link Monsters were invented. It could shut certain decks down. Still a very useful card and a fantastic facilitator. Since we mentioned White Prince, I'll go ahead out of order as I have it listed here in the deck list and move right to White Prince. This is the card that the White Princess is pitching the moment it comes into play. It says, if it's sent to the graveyard, you could send a Skull Servant and a Lady in White. White spelled like the undead monster. <laughs> Uh, from your hand or deck to the graveyard. Then you could banish two Skull Servants, in quotes, which means any card in the yard that is treated as Skull Servant, and the White Prince from the graveyard to special summon a King of Skull Servants from your deck. Once again, this card becomes a Skull Servant while it's in the graveyard. So, if you're following the flow here, to build up the King of Skull Servants, you can play a White Princess, will send a white prince to the graveyard. The white prince will send a skull servant and a lady in white in the graveyard. Lady in white, another monster that's treated as skull servant while it's in the graveyard, the rare defensive zombie at 2200 defense for a level 3. Face up level 3 or lower zombie monsters on the field, except the lady in white cannot be destroyed by battle and are unaffected by spell, trap cards, and effects. So an interesting little defensive choice late game, and if they manage to get rid of the Lady in White, it just makes your attack that much stronger. We've covered most of the Ursat's Skull Servants at this point. One more left in here is the White Mare. Card's name becomes Skull Servant. It is identical in stats to the original Skull Servant. 300 attack, 200 defense, level 1 monster. <sighs> Has two effects. Either one can be activated by discarding a White Mare. The first one is target one of your banished Skull Servant or White Mare cards. Return it to the graveyard. Second one is target one of your banished Lady in White or King of the Skull Servants and special summon it. So this will allow you to pull a Lady in White back onto the field to protect a King of Skull Servants. It would allow you to grab a King of Skull Servants that was banished face up. Or it will allow you to replenish the yard after using White Prince's ability to special summon a Skull Servant. Really nice host of choices there. I do want to mention that there is another card that came out somewhat recently, I want to say in the last year or two, called White Baking. I know it would help this deck, and I'm probably going to get some sometime in the future. But again, that hasn't been a top priority for me. This is just a fun deck. Yet another chance to show its age here. I've got a couple of level 6 monsters in here, really just for fun. Vampire Grace says, when a level 5 or higher zombie type monster special summoned to my side of the field by the effect of a zombie type monster while this card's in the graveyard, I could pay 2,000 life to special summon it from my graveyard. I can only use that effect once per turn, and honestly, I don't care much for that effect anyway. Uh, two things that I do enjoy is the fact that this is a solid hitter at 2,000 attack, and it gives me the chance to declare one type of card once per turn, and make my opponent send one card of that type from their deck to the graveyard. 
So it is a resource limiter as long as I'm careful not to feed graveyard recursion effects. Vampire's Curse. Another 6 star vampire with 2000 attack says when this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard you can pay 500 life points and special summon it during the standby phase of the next turn. When you do, it gains 500 attack. So in effect, it could go up to 2500 attack if used in battle. Also have two off of Summon Skull because I had two Summon Skull sitting around. Vanilla, it's a fiend, not a zombie, but it's got Skull in the name and it fits the theme. 2500 attack, it was a heavy hitter. And moving on, I have three spell cards in the deck. One copy of Dark Hole. It destroys all monsters on the field, that's just what it does. Monster Reincarnation allows me to discard a card, then target one monster in my graveyard, add it to my hand. Very useful because most of the monsters in this deck could just be played outright without any sort of tribute, and being able to discard a card can feed effects like White Prince. Also have one for one, send one monster from your hand to the graveyard to special summon a level one monster from your hand or deck. Sort of an interesting way of getting a King of Skull Servants out there, and it is a pretty darn perfect card for this deck. Something I've been told is not in fashion at all is the number of traps I run. Starting with three Call of the Haunted, quick way to get a king back if you need a king. Two Scrap Iron Scarecrows, when an opponent's monster declares an attack, you could target the attacking monster and negate the attack. Also, after that, set this card face down instead of sending it to the graveyard. Sell it nullified one attack per turn. Fiend Comedian, sort of a trap card that couldn't go wrong for me when I would play it. You toss a coin and call it. If you call it right, all of your opponent's cards in their graveyard are removed from play. If you call it wrong, you send a number of cards equal to the cards in your opponent's graveyard from your deck to the graveyard. So best case scenario or worst case scenario, depending on the situation, you're either removing your opponent's resources from their graveyard or you're building up Skull Servants in yours. Regeki Break allows you to discard a card, once again feeding your graveyard to target one card on the field and destroy it. Gravity Bind stops level 4 or higher monsters from attacking, which again, doesn't include Link monsters. One copy of Needlebug Nest, just send the top 5 cards of your deck to the graveyard and one copy of Cemetery Bomb. Inflict 100 damage to your opponent for each card in their graveyard. I have three cards in the extra deck. One is Pilgrim Reaper. It's a rank 6 Xyz monster. I call it XYZ, but I've been told it's pronounced Xyz. Um, question mark attack and defense. It gets 200 attack and defense for every dark monster in either player's graveyard. I thought thematically that fit well. Also gave me a reason to throw the level 6s in, other than not wanting to rely on Skull Servant or die. Also, you could detach a material from Pilgrim Reaper to make each player send 5 cards from their deck to the graveyard. That's a once per turn effect, and it is a fun effect to use as well. I have two of those, and a friend of mine, my buddy Derek over at Podman's Peculiar Plays, a few years back gave me a baby Tyragon. It's an Xyz monster that takes three level one monsters, says during your main phase one, you could detach a material from this card, then target one level one monster you control, it can attack your opponent directly. 
So the monster with flesh left is actually sort of the hidden weapon of the deck. With a Tyragon and a King of Skull Servants out, all I have to do is detach one material, and that King of Skull Servants is going directly at you. Now I'm sure you're more than tired enough of me babbling and babbling, so uh, let's do more babbling and babbling, but while playing a card game. Okay, we are back here at the dueling screen. Going up against the Dueling Robot, I honestly forget which deck I chose for it, but I am running the Skull Servants deck, which I have aptly named Bones here. Go ahead, ready this up. Do the old rock, paper, scissors. And let's see what we get out right. We've got a Scrap Iron Scarecrow. They seem to be terraforming. Really not the best start for us out of the gate here. It appears I'm facing off against Trick Stars. Okay, we've got a White Mare. Let's go ahead and pull the old-fashioned tea set. And we'll end the turn there, because there's really no reason to put Call of the Haunted out as of yet. They went with a scapegoat, so their field completely full. End up building up two Milus Radiant there. And negating our Scrap Iron Scarecrow. So we're down to 1800 already. Make that 1400 after the traps and everything. Just really not the best look for us. Get a Gravity Bind out there. And let's set a white mare. Kind of hope for the best on this. Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's activate the gravity mind. They targeted the call of the haunted, and I don't see the call of the haunted really helping us out at this point. Oh, feather duster. We just... We just kind of got it handed to us here in the first game. Yeah. That was an easy loss there. No side decking to go, and we'll go first this time. Okay, cool. Already starting off better with a white princess. That will pitch a white prince. That will pitch a skull servant and lady in white. So we've already got a graveyard of three built up. This is excellent. One trick star. Not going to do too much else at the moment. Yeah, we'll go ahead and, I mean, it's going to come out to the same math either way, but we'll activate the effect just so you can see it going. They're going to activate an effect as well. So they managed to escape by with a little extra damage there. And we're down to 7,100. Taking four there. Go ahead, normal summon one more time. Still able to get off the effect of the white princess. So we've built the yard up fairly well. Let's go ahead, banish a couple of cards. Let's do one of each, a Skull Servant and a Lady in White. Allows us to bring our first king out at 5,000 attack. And stay Trick Star at 700. Giving us a bit of a commanding lead here. We have another king in reserve as well as a Dark Hole. 
They managed to use a little dark hole chicanery as well. Ooh, they have an Eater of Millions too. Fantastic card. Test the waters here. Let's activate the White Mare. Built the yard up. Activate a Dark Hole. Normal Summon the King of Skull Servants. Now at 8,000 attack. And right over top for the win. So tied at one apiece there. Keep the deck as is because what else would we do, do with it? Got a one for one with a White Mare. Pretty good start. Got a white prince as well. Throw out our scrap iron. Go ahead, discard the uh, white prince. Really a perfect setup there because the white prince is going to drag two more to the yard. Well, that got cancelled, so. Our king is only at a thousand. But we'll at least get fifteen hundred out of the enemy with uh, out of the opponent bot from that solemn. Eater of millions, that's bad news for us. Let's go ahead and scrap iron that. They'll kill the king on this one. We'll not use the effect. And we'll not use the call yet. First thing we want to do, set our Regeki break and leave Cemetery Bomb in hand to just use that as the Eater of Millions is going to be our biggest pain in the neck. Discard. Let's destroy the Light Sage Field card, as that was doing all sorts of auxiliary damage last time out. Once again, Scrap Iron on the Eater of Millions. And the White Mare goes kaput. Which means there are two Skull Servants in the yard. Bringing the King out is going to give us an attack of 2 thou. Set another Regeki break. Now we just need a card in hand to use it. But with a 2,000 point King, we can go ahead and get rid of the Trick Star Licorisica. and get on our merry way back into this game. Once again, Scrap Iron, protecting us from the Eater of Millions' ability to just banish the first monster it fights each turn. Have a monster reincarnation that could be useful, or it could be Regeki Break Fodder. We'll see. King's just going to keep doing King things against the Face Down Defense card because we don't want them to build up too much. And we've got ourselves an old school Yu-Gi-Oh game here because we're past turn three. Looks like both sides are just sort of plugging away. Trickstar Reincarnation gonna make us banish our entire hand and if we do Draw the same number of cards. Could banish this card from the graveyard. Target a trick star monster in the graveyard and special summon it. Well, I'm not such a big fan of that, and we do need to get this white prince in the graveyard and not banished. So it's time for the Regeki break, and we're going to pitch the white prince to get rid of the Eater of Millions. That's going to allow us to try and trigger the White Prince and the Trick Star deck pulls an Ash Blossom out. Either way, we're up to 3,000. 
attack on our king, and we can normal summon the White Princess. Who's going to pitch our third White Prince? Which is finally going to proc and allow us to fill the yard a little more. So first thing we're going to do, King's going to attack, now a 6,000 attack right against Lycorissica. Taking them down to 1,700, White Princess is going to follow up. One heck of an insurance policy, they're down to 100 health. We've got a Scrap Iron, we've got a King, got a White Princess, and a Dark Hole pretty well wipes out our chances here. And there's another Eater of Millions. We'll take the Thou. Didn't want to risk the scrap iron there just in case. Let's activate the White Prince's effect. Skull Servant, Lady in White. Bring our King back. Which we'll do one more time. Now we have a pair of 2000s. And that's what we needed to get through here. First king is going to attack and get fed to the Eater of Millions. Second one is going to go right over top for the win. So there it was in action, the Skull Servants deck. Is it the best deck ever? No, it's a half decade past its prime and certainly shows its age. But it's fun and it's Halloween-y because bones. I hope you enjoyed this. I do hope it's at least entertaining. This has been a Grumpy Old Guy Gaming. Thank you for watching. Take care and we'll see you around.